Hello, welcome to The Biblical Perspective, an in-depth expositional study in the Word of God. Welcome to another Biblical Perspective Bible Study. I'm Minister Gwendolyn Holmes, and I'm happy to have tonight Minister Vera Thomas joining me for our discussion. Minister Vera and I are members of the ministerial team here at Emmanuel Community mm -hmm. Church. Welcome, Minister Vera. Thank you for having me, Minister Gwen. You're most welcome. As we embark upon a wonderful study entitled, The Holy Spirit Fruit of Self-Control. Yes. I begin in the prelude. The Holy Spirit is at work in the life of every believer. Yes. Changing our character so that we become more Christ-like. Mm -hmm. We did not come to Christ on our own, and we cannot grow on our own. Mm -hmm. God, the Holy Spirit, is at work in us, mm -hmm. conforming us to the image of Christ, which means the likeness or mirror representation. Mm -hmm. In John 6:44 the English Standard Version, it says, no one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws him. Mm -hmm. And Philippians 2.13 says, for it is God who works in you both to will and to work for his good pleasure. Mm -hmm. Romans 8. 29a says, for those whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son. Yes. So the Holy Spirit is working in us. He drew us to God to bring us to salvation. Mm -hmm. And he further works in us to bring us to the place to shape, to form, to transform us into the people that God wants us to be. Yes, Minister Gwen, can I just comment? Kind yes. Of you kind of already alluded to it. Yes. But that passage, John 6, 44, yes. when it says that no one comes to the Father except the Spirit the draws Spirit. him. Yes. And you know, sometimes people would like to take credit for their salvation yes. or to take credit for the relationship yes. that we enjoy with God through yes. Jesus Christ. Yes. But our salvation is not our initiative, yes. but it is the initiative of God. The God initiative. initiated and drew us to himself. And you know, as I was looking through that John uh, 6 chapter, yes. it, it is replete with uh, sayings that how we have to be drawn by the Spirit. It's not our own accord. And even to live this self-controlled life, yes. we cannot do it on our own, in our own strength. No. We need the help and the power of yes. the Holy Spirit of God. Yes, mm -hmm. yes, we always need the help of the Spirit of God. Mm -hmm. In fact, that's one of the names of the Holy Spirit, the helper. helper. Yes. Okay. Or paraclete, the one called alongside yes. to assist. Yes. To uh, help us. So we have no excuse for not walking in the light and walking in the spiritual way that God wants us to walk. Mm -hmm. We have no excuse for not developing the spiritual character with the fruit of the spirit that God wants exhibited in the believer's life. Yes. Amen. Amen. So the last spiritual fruit, Minister Vera, mm -hmm. and viewing audience, the last spiritual fruit or character trait that is listed in our text is self-control. Self -control. Oh, it's so important. Yes. 
This one is extremely important in the life of every believer and can make a huge difference in our Christian witness. Mm -hmm. After all, that's what we're called to be, witnesses in this world. Yes. We are to do distinctive Christian living. Amen. 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 So, Minister Vera, why don't you uh, embark upon the study about the Holy Spirit the Holy a little Spirit. further? Power, the power of the believer. The Holy Spirit is the power of God in us. Yes, yes. And we're told in the scriptures that he can give us the strength that we need yes. to be the living witnesses for Christ that we should be. Yes. And this witnessing is done with our speech Ooh. and with our lifestyle. Wow. You know, our speech has a lot to re reflects a lot of who we are in our character. It right? certainly does. Amen. Yes. 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 In order for us to accomplish this, we must have the self-control that only the Spirit can give. Wow. Only the Spirit, as we talked about the power of the Holy Spirit, He is the one that enables us, that yes. equips us, that helps us, as you said, the helper. He helps us to be able to live the self-controlled life that God intends for us to live. Wow, that's awesome, Minister Vera. Amen. And yeah. so as we look at Acts 1-8, which yeah. tells us, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be my witnesses both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and even to the remotest part of the earth. Matthew 5.13 also tells us, you are the salt of the earth. But if the salt has become tasteless, how can it be made salty again? It is no longer good for anything mm. except to be thrown out and trampled underfoot by men. Wow. Matthew 5.16 says, let your light shine before men in such a way that they may see your good works wow. and glorify your Father who is in heaven. Yes. Minister Gwen, I'd just like to also go back and, and just kind of give reference to Acts 1-8 again. Yes, yeah, sure. Where we talked about mm -hmm. that power source that we have living on yes. the inside of us. Yes. yes. Every believer, yes. again, every believer, every believer has the power of God at work in them. Yes. Enabling us again yes. to do all that God has called and commissioned us to do. Right. And you know, the Christian life, it's not based on our feelings. Sometimes we feel like we're inadequate or we don't have the ability to live as God has called us to live. Yes. But he's given us the power source to enable us to live as he's called us to live. That's and right. that God does not call us to do anything that he has not equipped or empowered us to do. Right. And to live the Christian life is, again, not based on our feelings, but it is based on the fact of scripture and what God has said in his word. Absolutely, absolutely, Minister Vera. And uh, as I'm just looking at the scriptures mm -hmm. that you just read, uh, it's clear in Acts 1-8 what the power is for. Mm. And the power is so that we can be witnesses. Yes. Witnesses the way God wants us to be witnesses. And so to be the godly witnesses that he wants us to be, we have to develop this fruit mm -hmm. in our character. Yes. We have to change some things. We have to allow. Self-control says, I'm going to allow the Holy Spirit. It doesn't mean I'm going to ignore and deny mm -hmm. and resist the Holy Spirit. It means I'm going to allow, not only allow, I'm going to invite. Mm. Invite the Holy Spirit to have first place in influence yes. in my life. 
as a Christian in every area. So I would say that it's not just enough to read Galatians 5, through 23, which you're going to read to us in just a moment. But we need to examine and ask ourselves introspectively, is this fruit evident in my life? Mm. Am I pleasing God? And you don't have to have all the nine fruit developed at the same level, but do you have any? <laughs> Good you know, it's yes. because when the scriptures that you read, minister, it said that men may see mm. your good works. They may not know the God that you serve or they may not know him like you know him yet. But at least if they see him working in you, his witness, mm -hmm. then that might lead that person to investigate wow. walking with God more closely. Mm. Amen. Amen. As you said, we can't just read the scriptures, but we have to reflect the scripture. We have to allow the, the scriptures to change our heart and change our speech and to change our lifestyle. Yeah. And, and I think of, of James, he said, what, we can't just be hearers of the word or yes. readers of the word, yes. but we have to do what the word says. Yes. We have to allow it to get in us yes. and transform us. Yes. Okay. So on that note, I will read our, pa our foundational read our passage, passage for tonight. Okay, our foundational yes, scripture. Yes, which is Galatians 5, and 23. And it says, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control yes. against such things there is no law. Wow. Minister. Well, I'll begin, Minister Vera, thank you so much. I'll right. begin our presentation proper. Mm -hmm. okay. The Greek word translated self-control is egrateia, mm -hmm. egrateia, mm -hmm. and means self-restraint, mm -hmm. continence, or mastery. The HELPS word study says that it is personal dominion that is, listen, in oneself, mm -hmm. proceeding out of oneself, but not by mm. oneself. Total dependence on the Holy Spirit, but it comes from within. Mm -hmm. The Bible says with the Holy Spirit, we can be strengthened in the inner mm. man. Yes. The Bible tells us in Philippians that we should have the attitude that Christ had in the inner man, mm -hmm. that he humbled himself, that he emptied himself. Although he being equal with God, he emptied himself and humbled himself as a servant mm. and became a man so that he could usher in salvation for us. Wow, the Holy Spirit is divinely powerful in that regard and in causing that to happen in our inner man. So that also we know we're not walking alone. God is never abandoning right. us when we are trying to get our character traits in order. Amen. Amen. And when that inward man is changed or transformed, it's going to be reflected in, in out, outward behavior. So that it can be seen. Yes. Amen. Right. Not for the show. Right. Not to be showy, but so that God can get glory. Mm -hmm. So that God and godliness can be observed. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. For the believer, self-control means being Holy Spirit controlled mm -hmm. and can only be accomplished by the power of God in us. Mm -hmm. Now, I just want to stop and talk about that word control. Mm. Now, some people have an issue with control. They have an issue with wanting to be in control. Mm -hmm. But it necessitates that when you yield to the Spirit of God, that you are giving Him control. Yes. You are yielding control of your decisions, mm -hmm. of your thought life, 
of what's coming out of your mouth. Mm -hmm. You are yielding to the Holy Spirit as your helper to help you control these things to see if they are lining up or aligning themselves with what God would be pleased yes. with. And that means that you are not going to be going headlong forward <laughs> with what you always did, life like you always lived right. it. You're going to have to stop and do some assessing and say, is the spirit in control or am I in control? And am I willing to allow the Holy Spirit to be in control? You have to ask yourself. Amen? Amen. It is translated temperance in the King James Version of the Bible and involves moderation, mm -hmm. constraint, and the ability to say no, but listen <laughs> what you're saying no to, to the carnal temptations mm -hmm. or fleshly desires. Sometimes we have no problem saying no to even serving in the church. Right. Will you be available? No. <laughs> we can say it real easily. But what about temptations mm. in our fleshly lives? Mm. Amen? Amen. To the carnal temptations or fleshly desires of our human nature. The spiritual fruit of self-control will develop in the life of each believer more or less, mm. depending on the extent that the believer yields mm. to the influence of the Holy Spirit in their thoughts, right. their speech, you said earlier, and language. Some people, Christians, mm -hmm. they can outcurse a non-Christian. That shouldn't Same be, again. yes, I'm addressing it, okay? <laughs> you shouldn't know and practice cussing so mm. much that when an opportunity of conflict or mm. frustration faces you, that's your go-to. Right. It's a common language for many people. It's a too common. It's too common. <laughs> too common. And we've discussed that before when we've talked about communication. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, your communication is supposed to reflect God. And, and even when God was upset with people, he never cussed. Mm -hmm. And Jesus didn't utter uh, 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 any kind of disdain word, even when they were persecuting him and beating him and saying all manner of things against him. And so you say, well, that was Jesus, which is reflective <laughs> of the Holy Spirit not being in control if that's your response. Right. Think about it. That was Jesus, but you are supposed to be walking in his footsteps. Yes. People are supposed to be able to desire your salvation because they see you being humble like Christ was. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Think about it. Amen, Minister. And on that note, you just think about the parents that is doing that. What are they presenting to their children? Absolutely. And when, when that child takes on that language, that language. then you want to punish that child for taking on that language. But if that is what you have been presenting to them, right. if mom is doing it, then it must be okay for me to do it. Right, right. And you know what I observe, um, I would say in our community, and you know what I mean, uh, <laughs> what I observe is that we don't mm. give our children and, and one another, even our brothers and sisters, we don't give them the tools mm. to resolve conflict. Right. And that is so easy cursing and mm -hmm. saying all kind of things and profaning the name of God yes. becomes so easy and they hear it all around them. Mm -hmm. So they don't know how to develop those skills. If you are a Christian, you have the Holy Spirit within you right. and you need to say, Holy Spirit, help, help me, me develop mm -hmm. holy language. Right. Language that honors God. Language that looks like I am a person that is trying to pursue godliness mm -hmm. and pursue righteousness. Right. If my language has been that way, help me to change it. Give me words to say that edify, mm -hmm. 
right. and build up even my child. But even if I'm facing someone who's oppositional mm -hmm. to me. Mm -hmm. I mean, I have been, let's say, something simple like being in a store at a counter when a, a clerk mm -hmm. didn't even want to respond to me with respect. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, something wells <laughs> up in you. You know, especially if you have some courage, a little bit of courage and bravery, right? Right. And you want to tell them about themselves. And you want to tell them what's wrong. But the Holy Spirit will say, hold your tongue. Right. The Holy Spirit will say, you will win more, and it's more healthy if you can be calm, then they can see what it's supposed to look mm -hmm. like. Mm -hmm. And maybe they will want to change and see, well, what is in them that and didn't that make them respond? Right. And even on the telephone, you're going to have to take a deep breath. <laughs> Been there, done that. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, all right, but we have to yield to the influence of the Holy Spirit in our thoughts, our speech and language. Get some new language. Mm -hmm. Ask somebody <laughs> to give you some words, okay? Expand don't your vocabulary. Expand your vocabulary, <laughs> right? Yes. And don't be so holy, you know, earthly good. Okay, work on that too. Self-control, okay? Don't be so condemning with your speech, all right? So we have to work on our speech, yield it to the Holy Spirit with speech and language and behavior towards others. Mm -hmm. Every day, every mm -hmm. believer should live in a manner that glorifies God. If that's your goal, you would at least be successful 50% of the time. <laughs> yeah. So why not increase that percentage? of pleasing God mm. instead of pleasing you and pleasing myself. Amen. That speaks of the necessity of the, the fruit of self-control. Self-control is not selfishness. Mm. Selfishness is still saying I'm in control and I'm not yielding to the Holy Spirit for any control. That's selfishness. Yes. That is not Holy Spirit, fruit of self-control. Amen. The enemies of the born-again believer are the carnal nature, which is what we're talking about, mm -hmm. the world, and the devil. Mm. We must be aware of them. That's why we're talking about them, and we're not being silent and quiet on purpose. And the pitfalls mm. they present. Yes. So we will not be lured away from self-control. Mm. We are to prayerfully mm. submit to the Spirit's leading and study the scriptures yes. for instruction and motivation mm -hmm. to do what you would naturally do. Mm -hmm. You have to study the scriptures. When I got saved at 19 years old, my friends weren't saying, oh, now you say we're so happy. Now you won't, don't want to party with us. Now you don't want to go clubbing with us. Now you don't wear, want to wear, in my day, the hot pants. Now they're, and, and they're already beyond the Daisy Dukes. You know, I see so many women mm. showing their bodies out of control. But it doesn't have to be like that. When you become a Christian, you want your character trait to change and that's going to take some yielding to the Holy Spirit because you want to stand out for Christ right. and not be like the world. Mm -hmm. They're not going to applaud you. Mm -hmm. But someone may ask, what's wrong with it? If you have the scriptures, then you can gently tell them. Amen. 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 So we must study the scriptures for instruction and motivation. So my point for saying when I got saved at 19 I began to study the scriptures. And the more I studied the scriptures, the easier it became mm. to alter and augment my lifestyle to line up with the scriptures. Right. It became the dictate of my life. Amen? Amen. But you also have to have a desire to want to glorify and to honor God with your life. And the Holy Spirit gives us those desires. Yes. God. Share some scripture <clears throat> with us, Minister Vera, on that. Well, 
on, on the on world, worldliness. The yeah. world and the worldly system. We're looking at 1 John wow. verses 216 in the English Standard Version. And it says, for all that is in the world, the desires of the flesh and the desires of the eyes and, and I'm sorry, and pride of life is not from the Father, but is from the world. Wow. Mm. And this carnal nature of our physical body wars against our regenerated spirit. It does. And must be actively denied. Yes, actively, actively we resisted, can, yes. actively denied. Yes. We can't be passive. We have to actively bring, as Paul said, we have to bring our bodies under submission, under subjection to the Holy Spirit of God. And this is something we have to do daily, minute by minute, because as we're, gonna, yes, we're going to look at uh, in Romans 7, 18, where it says, for I know that mm. nothing good dwells in me that is in my flesh. Mm -hmm. For I have the desire to do what is right, but not the ability to carry it out. Yes, that, comment on that, Mr. Amen. Vera. And we Not have an, a, an opposer, mm -hmm. the devil mm -hmm. or Satan, yes. who is a formidable spiritual enemy mm -hmm. who seeks ways to entice believers to sin. Yes. He seeks ways to yes. entice us, to yes. tempt us to uh, go against what God has instructed us to do. And it says we are to stay alert yes. and submit to God who can give us the power to resist him, to yes. resist Satan. Yes, he will give you yes. the power to resist and s submit to God's mm -hmm. word if that is a desire of yours. And if it is not a natural desire of yours, which is not because your flesh doesn't want to obey the things mm -hmm. of, the, of the Lord and your flesh wants to problem solve mm -hmm. the way the flesh wants to do it. It doesn't want to follow the dictates of scripture, but you must yield and deny your flesh, but in the power of the Holy Spirit. Yes. I mean, it's not like, you know, you're on a diet and you're on a spiritual diet and you know what happens <laughs> with diets. You keep revolving. Yes. Okay. That means you keep going backwards and trying to go forward. But when you rely on the Holy Spirit, mm. He will do what he does. Yes. And it will happen. You will get stronger if that's really your desire. If you don't have the desire, pray, pray. as you said before, pray. And I know that seems too simple, mm -hmm. but God is the one who initiated prayer. Yes. God is the one who gave the Holy Spirit. So if you have faith, mm. then use it to believe God. Yes. and that what he has provided, it will accomplish what he said it will accomplish. Yes. You must believe that God exists mm. and that he will reward, reward you for believing in him. And diligently, that's where that diligently seeking him. Yes. On air, when we feel weak, yes. we know that we have the power of the Holy Spirit who is at work in us. But yes, sometimes we have to ask. We have yes. to ask the Holy Spirit to help us in that moment of weakness when yes. we feel ourselves falling short. Yes. And as we move on to Ephesians 6, 12, yes. for we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against the rulers against yes. the authorities, against the cosmic powers over this present darkness, mm. against the spiritual forces of evil yes. in the heavenly places. Yes. And 1 Peter 5, 8 also speaks of this, and this is from the New Living Translation where he says, stay alert, watch out for your great enemy, the devil. Yes. He prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. Yes, yes, looking, looking. for someone. Mm. And when we are not <laughs> alert, we fall prey to the enemy. Yes. And we get tripped up in that sense. Proverbs, the biblical book of wisdom, informs us of the value of self-control. Yes. Proverbs 25, 28 says, 
A man without self-control is like a city broken into and left without walls. Wow. Proverbs 29, 11 says, a fool gives, gives full vent to his spirit, but a wise man quietly holds it back. Wow. Self-control is essential if we are to continue being credible witnesses for Christ. Yes. 1 Corinthians 9, 27, and ESV says, but I discipline my body and keep it under control, lest, lest after preaching to others, I myself should be disqualified. Wow, nobody wants to be disqualified, Amen. right, Minister Vera? Amen. And Minister Vera, the Holy Spirit has been given to the believer by God to assist us mm -hmm. with self-control. 2 Timothy 1.7 says, For God gave us a spirit not of fear, mm. but of power mm. and love and self-control. Yes. Living a life of denial, of fleshly cravings and resistance to worldly temptations mm -hmm. and alertness to the traps of Satan and committing to live for God is the reasonable sacrificial service or act of worship yeah. by each believer. Mm -hmm. This is made possible by the Holy Spirit through a self-control. Mm -hmm. Now, God has promised in his word to never allow us to be overpowered mm. in life beyond what we can endure and yet remain self-controlled. Mm -hmm. 1 Corinthians 10, 13 gives us support for that comment, yes. which says, no temptation how many? No temptations. No temptation has overtaken you that is not common to man. Mm -hmm. What we experience is common for everyone. Yes. yes. Maybe not just your particular experience today, but somebody experienced something similar mm -hmm. to what you experienced in life because they have a human nature. Yes. Okay? Yes. And God is faithful and he will not let you, not let you hmm. be tempted beyond your ability. But with the temptation, he will also provide the way to escape that you may be able to endure it. Mm -hmm. Since God has given believers everything we need to live godly lives, we are instructed to make every effort to always be self-controlled. We're not purporting that it's always easy, mm -hmm. but we are purporting that it is always something we should be pursuing. Yes, amen. Amen. And Second Peter 1, 5 through 6 in ESV speaks this to this. He says, for this very reason, make every effort to supplement your faith with wow. virtue and virtue with knowledge wow. and knowledge with self-control and self-control with steadfastness mm. and steadfastness with godliness. Wow. The Apostle Paul, under the direction of the Holy Spirit, informs us that believers are to deny worldly passions mm. and maintain self-controlled lives. Wow. Deny and Titus also passions. speaks of this in Titus 2, 11 and 12, where he says, for the grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation for all people, training us to renounce ungodliness wow. and worldly passions, and to live self-controlled, upright, and godly lives in the present day. Wow. We can, we can all we conduct can. our lives under the Spirit's control in a manner that God will be pleased with. 
Amen. Amen. You know, but this takes practice. It does. It, it, it takes over and over doing the same thing allowing the spirit to take control in certain areas of our lives and certain other areas <laughs> of your life and before it becomes a habit you just have to practice it and you have to believe god mm -hmm. and then you should be able to see progress progress yes. i always said if you are a christian you should be able to we tell our disciples mm -hmm. you should be able to measure where you were with where you are. Mm -hmm. You should be putting up a measuring line to see am I in the same place or am I growing? Wow. Even if you're growing a little bit, that's still growth. Growth, right. Amen? Amen. We can all live a life of self-control mm -hmm. and we can all benefit by the Holy Spirit's lead, leading us in every area of our lives but you have to start minister Vera. amen in every area in our families yes on our job yes and especially operating our vehicles on the road we need uh -oh. self-control we uh -oh. need restraint uh-oh <laughs> which is that that's a common temptation yes that we all face on a daily basis and and that's a good measuring rod when we're behind the wheel Yes. In our cars. Yes. That gives us, allows us to see where our faith is, where our self control Ooh, is, where our yes. gentleness is. It allows where our, us. It allows us to see. Gives you opportunity. <laughs> it brings out the best in us or right. the worst in us. The breath, best or the worst. <laughs> And so there's your measuring rod right, right there. You, exactly. you don't have to write it down. Just get in the car, start driving. Okay. So that's beautiful. And and one last one. Oh, after being offended, also when we are persecuted. Yes. When we are persecuted, persecution. You know that's opposed. That's mistreated. Mm. That's abandoned. That's left aside that's put aside because primarily you have a christian lifestyle yes and some people especially young people you you have the fear they call mm. it phobo fear of being left out mm. you know f f fear of being without uh you can't have that fear the lord has not given you the spirit of fear right. but of power and of love and of peace and self-control yes okay so you have to believe and know that when you live for god he will never abandon mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. he will always be there with you that is why he gave you the holy spirit yes. that is why he told the disciples occupy stay here until the promise that i promised you which is the holy spirit mm -hmm. until he, he comes. comes right he is a called another name the comforter mm. and we don't want to have that uncomfortable feeling uh for walking with god and walking away from our worldly friends mm. and our worldly lifestyle that seems uncomfortable and there's a fear right. of what that's going to be like trust god trust at god. 19 years old i did it i mm. trust god i've never regretted it i've only had joy because of it I really saw God bless my life and still mm. bless my life because I dare walk away from worldly thinking yes. and worldly lifestyles. Oh, I know it exists. Mm -hmm. I, I know how deep it can get. I know what's out there and I have the temptations just like you. Mm -hmm. But dare to believe God. Dare to walk by faith. Amen. Dare to allow the Holy Spirit fruit of self-control to grow in you. Amen. 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 Minister Vera, all the lessons we have covered on the fruit of the Holy Spirit as we close in this study series can serve to not only make us better and more effective mm -hmm. believers, more effective witnesses, but it can aid us in all of life's endeavors. Amen. It, in other words, it can benefit you more than just being a Christian in the church. Mm -hmm. The Holy Spirit and these principles, this fruit, 
can benefit you many more ways, but you got to trust God and take a step. Amen. Minister Vera, you have closing remarks? Just the fact that God has not left us alone to live this life, but he has given us the help that we need as we saw in the scripture that he's given us everything that we need to live this godly life. And so never feel that you are alone, but you have the help of the Holy Spirit of God who lives in you. Amen. Amen. And you'll never be alone. Amen. Even if you feel loneliness, mm -hmm. God says he makes a home or mm -hmm. family for the lonely. Yes. That's the promise in scripture. Yes. So you will never walk alone. You will never be alone. And God mm -hmm. will send you. Your family might abandon you. Mm -hmm. Your workmates might abandon you. Your relatives may abandon you far and mm -hmm. near. And your old friends may abandon you but god won't abandon you he will send you new people amen 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 thank you thank for you. joining us we pray that you have been enlightened we pray that you have been motivated and inspired to want to study more that is our purpose of the biblical perspective we are trying to enlighten we are trying to mm -hmm. highlight the word of god and be helpful to you as Christians, and if you don't know the Lord, we invite you to get to know him and learn of his peace. Amen. We thank you, and we hope you join us next time. Two six zero seven Crenshaw Boulevard in the city of Hawthorne, California. You can find all of our messages on our YouTube channel, don't forget to click subscribe and thanks for watching. Be blessed for God is with us.